Uh, Sunday, January 16th will be my official installation service. Um, I am pastor. They voted me in. I am you know, officially the pastor, but they're going to officially make it official with the Church of God. So that'll be Sunday, December 16th. I uh, would love to have all of you here for that service. Uh, Sunday, January 23rd. So obviously for the last few weeks, I've been telling you all that our general assembly meeting is going to be next week, January 9th. We are actually changing that date to January 23rd. Reason being, we have to, as a board, give you two weeks to review the finances from last year and the budget for this upcoming year. With Dina's accident and a couple other things that were going on, we weren't able to get those to you in time. We will have those to you by next Sunday to give you two weeks to review that. So our general assembly meeting has been moved to after church on Sunday, January 23rd. Um, ladies in praise, we have a new date for you. That will be uh, Saturday, January 22nd at 10 a.m. I believe it's going to take place at Cindy's house. Um, they're also going to be doing the secret, secret sister reveal for this year, 2022. So if you're a lady in the church and want to meet with other, did I, is it February 20? Okay, then we're going to wait for that announcement. I was told January, so I guess it's going to be, okay, I will find. I, oh, yeah, you said that. You said, well, I will officially find out when that's supposed to be. You're not going to be there, so we probably shouldn't show up at your house. Um, so, yeah, I will find the exact date out of what everyone thinks. Now, Sons of Thunder, the men's meeting, that will be Saturday, January 23rd, or 29th, I should say. Uh, that will be here at the church. We're going to do breakfast, and I'm going to select a, a man that's going to give their testimony like we did last time. Um, like I said, here in the church, it's good to get to know each other's stories, how we came to Christ. Awesome opportunity for us to spend some time together. So that's really all I've got. I've talked entirely too much to begin the service. Let's worship. Ooh, that. uh, it's good to have a pastor. We're not complaining. Talk all you want. we got nowhere to be, right, guys? Let's all stand again, because you know this old gospel hymn, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms, and you can't lean if you're sitting, right? But unless you, <laughs> if you can't stand, that's fine. But we need to lean, we got to stand, right? All right, you ready? Oh, what a fellowship. Love that. 
hearts never failing, let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a stranger, the hope of nations.
That's not by accident. Amen. You're going to hear more about late today. Um, let's see. We don't have to dis dismiss the children unless I go. Um, so I guess we'll talk about the tithe. So I want to talk about the tithe today because I always try to think about that every week, you know, while I'm kind of, God's help me, you know, give me. Wait a minute. Now I'm not in the canyon anymore. Um, it makes me kind of get in a prayer life to think about those things. And it's good. We should all be in that prayer life about giving. And I had something all planned, but then God this morning, he reversed all of that. He got this little devotional, and I read this story in it, and I thought, that's the story for today. I'll give you the other story maybe next week. <clears throat> but nothing God ever puts in your heart goes empty, so it'll be used somewhere. So anyway, I want to talk to you today about the 5,000 loaves. Now, everybody knows the, the story of the 5,000 people that were fed, not five. It was five loaves and two fishes, right, brother? Because my math's not too good at this age, so I just want to make sure. Okay, so the, the, you think about that story and say, well, what's that got to do with tithing? Well, here's what it's got to do. So Andrew brings this little boy up to Jesus because there's all these people to feed, and he says, see who's got food? So Andrew brings this little boy, and he's got, you know, five loaves of barley bread, and he's got two fishes. Well, Andrew knew in his worldly mind there's no way you're going to feed all those people with just those two fish and, you know, five loaves of bread. But what he brought it to him for was to see what Jesus could do with it, okay? Sometimes we forget our job, right? I've had people work for me. If they're so busy about things, they forget what their job really is. They're worried about the result instead of the job. We need to worry about the job, and whether it's giving the gospel or bringing tithes and offerings, and maybe you didn't have much to bring today. And I think we're going to pass. Are we passing the? Yes, we are. Oh, I see Tony back there. Okay. And Ryan, it's good to have you back, brother. So anyway, the, the, the gist of it was don't worry about what you're bringing. Think about all God can do with it because we know from that story he multiplies everything. And what he said about the widow's might, just that little teeny thing. And he says, she's given it all. You know, and that's the spirit we need to come in. So the other story is about ladies. I'll try to save that for next week, but it's really uplifting and good for ladies. It was a good little nugget for you, but I'll save that one. But let's think about that today as we pray over this offering that God's going to do with it like he did with those five loaves and those two fishes. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you today for the blessing of being here. Ooh, we thank you for salvation. Lord, you've given us everything. There's nothing really we have want of. Lord, you answer every need. It may not always be the answer we want, but you always listen, and you do what's best for us. And sometimes it's hard to accept when it hurts, but we're still thankful, and our faith is that we know you love us and that you have the hairs of our head counted and we know you're the multiplier of all things as we bring an offering today, which, Lord, I know you don't need money. You don't need anything. Everything is yours. But we're bringing it for the use, for the multiplication, not just of money, but the multiplication of souls in the kingdom of God. Lord, help us to think about that as we, every week when we write our tithe checks, to think, wow, this could end up saving somebody in Nigeria, Australia, maybe even in Winter Haven. So, Lord, we ask you now to bless the gift and the giver and to take this and that you would go ahead and multiply it for us. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. amen. Rainbows, living colors, flashes 
Good to see everyone this morning. It's excellent to see uh, New Year starting out with such a good crowd, and uh, I've been on a whirlwind tour uh, myself, and so some of you I may have not got a chance to meet yet, but it's so exciting to see that we gather together as his body to sing praises to him this morning, and as we come to him in our corporate prayer time, uh, we want to thank him for the opportunity. You know, there's a lot of things, I don't know about you from Alabama, now New Year's you have to eat black-eyed peas and hog jaw, right, to, to get all those prosperous things for the year and turnip greens and uh, those things like that. So, But, you know, as a believer, the best thing that you can do is to start out the new year uh, worshiping with the body. Uh, it's a wonderful thing that this is the first Sunday, and we're here together. Isn't it great to know that, that we don't know what's going to be happening on the last Sunday of this year, but we certainly can uh, have control over what's happening today, and you're here those of you joining us online, we're so excited that you're here. And we just want to ask God's blessing upon this time together as we hear the word brought to us that we would open our hearts and our minds, that God would speak to us. You know, we've heard wonderful music and praise, and uh, we'll hear a great message, I'm quite sure, but Brother Anthony has prepared. But the best thing we can do is hear from God, and, and we hear from God through other people. And so sometimes we have to remove our own distractions and so let's ask that God would uh, give us the ability to put things aside for the next few moments to listen to him to what he would have to say to us remember his word is a living word and although the words may be read on the page and the message may be spoken in one direction God may very well speak to us in something totally different because it is the living word of God and so with that let's ask uh, the Lord's presence here to be with us and for us to be attentive to him pray with me father thank you for an opportunity to come and to worship and truly holy are you and 
so many distractions in life and things, God, so many things that we have going on. We just ask that you would help us to set aside this moment to listen to you. We thank you for uh, the words of encouragement. We thank you for the worship. We thank you for the word that will be delivered. But, Lord, we ask now that you would enable us to personally, inwardly, uh, set aside some quiet time in the midst of the body of Christ here that we could hear from you. And, Lord, if we hear from you today and we're obedient, we can go from this place and saying, surely, truly, it has been good to be in the house of the Lord together today. And may it be so of each of us, for it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> All right. Good morning, brothers and sisters. And once again, happy 2022. Happy New Year to everybody. That's loud. Okay, hopefully that doesn't continue. Monitor back there. Okay, we're going to go with it. Well, everybody, I know you got your communion cups as you came in. Do plan on at the end of the service. We're not going to do it now, uh, but we will be taking communion at the end of the service. Um, so just to kind of give you a heads up on that. Um, but there is something that I want to address this morning. And the thing that I want to address is, you know, Sister Carol came up to me. And I, this is something we talk about prayers. We talk about praises, prayers being answered. And we've been praying for Carol over the last several weeks. Um, her heart has been in AFib. It's been out of rhythm. And it's been something that she's really, you know, been asking us to pray for. Well, she had her procedure. We prayed over her. And she is in perfect health now. She is in good shape. Her heart is back in rhythm. And so I feel like any time that you have a prayer request answered like that, that it's a praise. We're coming into 2022. A lot of us dealt with, uh, you know, losses last year. We dealt with things. But when you have a prayer answered, when you have a praise like that, it's something you share with your brothers and sisters in Christ in the church. Amen. So we are glad to hear that. I love hearing those. If any of you, again, has praises or, or any kind of prayer requests that we can be praying over you into the new year, please, please let us know. As a church body, we are family and we are to pray over each other in sickness and in health. And so when we do that, please, please involve your brothers and sisters. But it's so wonderful to, to be with you uh, for the first Sunday here in 2020. And again, like I said this morning, it's weird to say it's 2022. Uh, I kind of, this, you could have said this last year, but as I was thinking about the message, do you realize that we are now this much, we are on this side of being closer to the year 2050 than we were the year 1980? Think about that for a second. We are closer to the year 2050 than we are the year 1980. And when you think about that, that's mind boggling to me. It's just time just it stands still for nobody. It moves on. You have good, you have bad. But I, I hope you all are having a happy new year, a healthy new year, a safe new year as we've just started. But I know for me this new year was so much different. You all know that I was a full-time restaurant manager for the last six years. And I've been a bivocational pastor before I came here. But this was actually the first time that I didn't have to rush out of the restaurant in hopes to get home by midnight to be able to kiss my wife and ring in the New Year with my children. Uh, for those of you that are friends with me on Facebook, you saw that every one of my kids made it to New Year. And we were all awake and we got to, you know, drink the little sparkling grape juice together. And it was just wonderful for me to be able to do that. Oftentimes I ring in the new year with strangers in a restaurant and, and to be able to do that as a full-time pastor here in Winter Haven, um, that's, that's something that I'll never take for granted again. Um, but as we move into the year 2022, I think all of us know it's that time of year again, right? Every single one of us is going to do what? Or we've already done it. We're going to make a New Year's resolution. A lot of, no, nobody's going to do that. Okay, well, some of us, I think, me... For me, I don't know if you've all know this, I don't know if my shirts are fitting a little more snug, but since I got here, I've gained 15 pounds. Um, I don't know how that's happened. I feel it in my shirt and my pants. Uh, but for me, my New Year's resolution is to start dieting, eating, I don't wanna say diet, but eating better. To eat a little bit better, to hit the gym a little bit more. When I first got here, I did well, but you, know, you get into that office and you're typing sermons and you're meeting with the congregation and that's just so fulfilling and wonderful. You're like, I don't need to go to the gym. I'm already filled the way I need to be. And yes, I'm filling out quite nicely. So, uh, but for me, that, that's my New Year's resolution. But I think a lot of us, we're going to, to make those. 
And uh, outside of that, that New Year's resolution for myself, I, I assume that some of you, not all, have made one as well. My question to you all, and I've been forming questions a lot lately, is what's going to be different in your spiritual life this year? What's going to be different? How will you walk with Christ? How will your commitment to the church and the mission to reach lost souls for the kingdom play out? How will it be different for you? What will it take for each one of you that call Spirit Lake home? Maybe some of you call another church home. How are you going to be an intricate part of those services in that church? Every single one of us, we have a mission. And as you head into the new year, when you think about all these resolutions and things that we're supposed to do, the number one thing we can think about is how are we going to play a bigger role in eternity? How are we going to play a bigger role for the kingdom of God? So this morning in Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 15, it says this. Not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward. In Christ Jesus. So first and foremost, I think as a congregation, anything that we are holding on to from last year, anything we're holding on to from this past year, we need to let go of. Every single one of us sitting in the sanctuary today and watching online, we have failed in some way over the last year. All of us. Again, whether we had uh, something in January last year to diet, to work out more, to do this, to that. We all failed in some way. We've all in some way let God down and we beat ourselves up for it. Why did we do that? God's so mad at me, He's so ashamed, I can't believe. And we beat ourselves. We have to learn to let go of that. We serve a very forgiving God. And, and whatever we, way we failed, it'll bring up painful memories this year or past experiences that we tend to beat up ourselves for which we shouldn't be doing i think every one of us in this room and we all flip the news on or if we don't watch the news we have smartphones that has a news feed on it 2020 and 2021 have not been easy on any of us by any stretch of the imagination at all you have a global pandemic which is still going you have massive rising in the cost of living because of inflation not to mention there's a ton of uncertainty in politics every time you flip on the tv Right now in this world, and Ed, you did it again, brother, right now in this world of so much what we consider right, so much of what is considered right according to the world is, is a sin. They consider it right. They say it's perfectly fine to do these things, but then what, the, what, God, what God says, no, that is detestable, that is finished, the, God, God, the world says this is right. We're supposed to live like this. This is what we're supposed to do. It, everything's backwards. Everything's mixed up. And, you know, we come to church to, to get fed, to be able to be told right from wrong. If you don't have your children, your grandchildren coming, if we're not coming to be able to feed into them, so often we're being fed by this world, this social media entertainment-driven world, and when it tells us it's right, we believe it's right. Right? Something that my kids try and watch way too much, and I'm deleting them off devices and doing that. They love YouTube. You have all these YouTube streamers and all these people that tell you, and they're telling you what you should be doing, what's right. This is what's popular. This is what you should be doing. We've drifted away from the word of God, the ultimate truth, the only truth. No matter what happened last year, church, we cannot let it control our minds when it comes to what's going to happen this year. We must repent. We must move on. You know, I've met so many people that call themselves Christians that they're like, I remember when I was saved. I came to the altar, I repented, and that was it. I'm like, oh, so have you, have you repented since then? Oh, no, I didn't need to. What do you mean? We sin in word, thought, and deed every single day. We have got to be repenting to God. We have got to ask God for forgiveness. 
those things that we think about from last year that we hold on to. Why did I do that? If I wouldn't have done that, this person wouldn't have done this or said this. My family would still be intact. Don't beat yourself up for that. Jesus Christ died on the cross for that. So you could lay it all at the foot of the cross and let him take those burdens for you. Now, you might be asking yourself, Pastor, what kinds of things should we be focusing on? Where are we going to head in 2022? I'm glad you asked. In Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14, it says this. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, Forgive as the Lord forgave you, and over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. I think first and foremost, according to this passage, Scripture right here, we must first, as God's chosen people, we've got to have what? Compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience. Now, I want to show of hands, how many of you has mastered every one of these things? Okay, good. I didn't see any hands go up. That's good. I was just doing it as I, I did not master them. I just want to see if anyone else would follow suit. I don't have any of those mastered. None of them. Like I talked about with a friend over the phone a couple weeks ago, just because pastors are called to preach, just because we know we're called to stand up here on Sunday mornings and preach what the perfect, the perfect, the perfect word of God says, doesn't mean we have it mastered we don't have this life figured out but we as a body we as brothers and sisters we we go through this thing called life together and when we go through this thing called life together we learn together you see i have a devout love for the word of god and i have an absolute love for his people all of you but i am by no means perfect If I was or I claimed to be, I would challenge each one of you to go to the board and try and get me kicked out so I didn't preach anymore because I am not perfect. I can, I have this desire and I hope all of us gain this desire, but I have this desire to to let the Lord change me from the inside out. I want him to change me each and every day to cleanse my heart to care about the things and love the things that he loves. To stop focusing on the wants and needs of Anthony. To not focus on the wants and needs of myself and focus on what God's people need. You see, even the Lord came to serve. He came to serve people, not to be served. When we do that as a church, when our thoughts, our desires, our souls become consumed. I'd even go as far to say we are obsessed with who God is and his desires. Then and only then will we be able to clothe ourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Next, as we as Christians, we need to be able to forgive those that have trespassed against us. I'm not going to ask for a show of hands this time, but every one of us in here, there's somebody in this world that we need to forgive. Somebody has done us wrong. We might have rehashed those feelings over the holidays. You know, there's a a son, a daughter, a grandchild, a father, a mother that we need to forgive. Like this passage tells us, we must be able to forgive as the Lord forgave you. You see, none of us are perfect. We've all sinned. We've all trespassed against God, but yet he has forgiven us. Something that I've realized is that there's things in this world, in this life, that people do that we don't expect. It could be a loved one, again, a family member, a friend. And in our minds, we, we, we think to ourselves, how could they have done this? This person should never have done this. Why would they do this? And we as Christians, we sit there and we say to ourselves, I, I can never forgive this. I can never let this go. And I think about Jesus and I think about the cross, and I think about the things that I did before I knew Christ as Lord and Savior, and I think to myself, how could he ever forgive me? How could he ever let this go? 
because I remember who I was before Jesus entered my life. And when we think about that, we can understand that, you know what, whatever that person did, it might be hard to forget, but I can indeed forgive that person. There may be somebody in this room that needed to hear that today, that's holding on to a grudge of some sort. The Bible is very clear about what it's telling us. We have got to forgive people the same way that God forgave us. And there's no better way than the first Sunday of the year 2022 than with a fresh slate, amen? Last but not least, the sentence from this passage is to put on love, which binds everything we just talked about together. When we show love and compassion to those around us, the rest of these will seamlessly fall into place. At least they should. If we are loving our God the same way that we should be, the way that he loves us, we are called to love who again? What's the greatest commandment in the Bible? Love. Love God, love people, right? That is the greatest commandment we've ever been given. So I want to read all these again so you can see how they fit together. In Colossians chapter 3, again, we just read them, 12 through 14. And I want you to really look at these verses. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Church, to tie it all together, if these aren't some of the most perfect Bible verses for us to ponder as we start the new year, I don't know what is. These are the things we should already be doing as Christians, but so often we need a, a kick in the pants to remind us that we should be doing as Christians, right? Right? As humans, we tend to fall short. And there's no better time than January, the beginning of the new year, for us to pick back up and follow these commands as we move forward. Love God, love people. Now, many of you know I've been asking prayers for, for my relationship with my father. You see, as I was writing this sermon, it, it stirred a ton of emotions for me. There's a lot of baggage, a lot of issues in my relationship with my father. Things aren't once they were for about 30, I'm 39 years old, for about 37 years of my life, they were wonderful. And for about the last two years, they haven't been so wonderful. But what I've learned over the last couple months is that, that grudges, they're so destructive. They're not only destructive for the person that's holding them, but they're self-destructive to the person who feels they were wronged. You see, I feel I was wronged by my father. My father feels he was wronged by me. I've reached out many times and I've asked for forgiveness with no response. And all I can do as a pastor, as a Christian, is to forgive him. Is to forgive him for what he's done and said against me and to move forward. I pray every day for his salvation. I pray every day that he comes to know the Lord the way he ought to know the Lord. And that's my prayer above everything else. I would love for that relationship to be reconciled, but more importantly, I would love to see my father in heaven one day. Amen. When you hold a grudge against somebody, you oftentimes end up hurting yourself more than the person you're mad at. As crazy as it sounds, forgiveness sometimes isn't for the person who did you wrong, but it's for the person who's doing the forgiving. So those cinder blocks get lifted off your shoulders. A quote I read this week from Max Lucado said this, Unforgiving servants always end up in prison. Prisons of anger, guilt, and depression. God wants our minds to be free, and the reason that is is so he can fill them with the things he has in store for us in this life. Every one of us, we think about eternity, and we think about the future, and yes, we want to think about those things. Those are beautiful but we have a goal and a mission on this earth. When we lock ourselves in prisons of anger, 
and of guilt and depression. We become so consumed by our emotions that we're unable to focus on the things of God. So I give you this advice to start the new year. Set yourself free, brothers and sisters. Give up any of those grudges you're holding on to and forgive those that have hurt you. Now I do want to be clear about something. Some of you may be thinking again this morning that pastor this person what they did it's just too much i'm not asking you to ignore what that person did god doesn't want us to pretend it never happened what god is asking you to do is to forgive them to understand that what happened to us that it hurt us very badly but to understand when jesus died on the cross that also hurt him very badly Jesus did it to forgive each and every one of us for all, and I emphasize the word all, of our trespasses against him. And I can promise you again, ours far outweigh anything that anyone has ever done to us. No matter who your grudge is against, we need to give it to God this morning. Let him guide us in the way to forgive, in the way to move on, in the way to heal. He is the only one, again, that is able to bear those kinds of burdens. And with him doing so, he enables every single one of us to forgive the same way that he does. If Jesus can forgive us, if he can go through the cross, which again was the most painful device ever constructed for humankind, if he can forgive us, I can promise you, I can promise you that you can forgive those that have trespassed against you. Amen. As we close this morning, church, it all boils down to this. Will this new year be just a change from the year 21 to 22? Is it just a calendar flip for so many of us? Or are we willing to completely dedicate ourselves and our entire being to who Jesus is and what he's asking of us? Will your mission be to build the kingdom of God and reach the lost in the new year? Because it's exactly what scripture is asking of us. So are we here at Spirit Lake willing to make that kind of commitment? It's a tall order. What I'm asking you isn't something easy. Okay, pastor, you got it. I'm heading out of here. It's it's a done deal. No, it's commitment. I had an hour long discussion with a friend of mine last night about commitment it is not easy it's the hardest thing you will ever do but when you put your time and effort into diet into exercise and your mind is committed to something we're amazing creatures of habit we make it happen don't we we go and do whether you've worked to obtain something whether you've done this you can do it but it takes time and effort your relationship with God, it's not a one-way street. It's not God saying, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. We have to put in the time and effort too. The new year will be something special if we're willing to forgive those that hurt us and to focus on God and his desires for our life moving forward. So there's two things I challenge you with as we move into the new year. The first, forgive and forget as best you can. Whoever has done you wrong over the last year, forgive them. I promise you will set yourself free. And second, no longer be a slave to sin. Those things you're beating yourself up for from last year, lay them all at the foot of the cross. Let 2022 be the year that you finally commit 100% to what the Lord has in store for your life. Follow him as he leads you. You are all made and equipped to win souls for the kingdom of God. You see, as your pastor, I'm not just, I'm not supposed to come up here on Sundays and say, hey, do this and then run out and do, I'm supposed to send out a charge, a calling for each of us to go and do. Those have got to be our commitments for the new year. When we ask ourselves, what's going on in this world? Why does it look the way it does? We don't have to look any further than the people in the church and what we're called to go out and do. We're not going to see a change if we are not the change. Amen? 
So as the band comes forward, church, I want you to remember that this year. The band's gonna come forward. We're gonna sing a closing song. Then I'm gonna come back up. I'm gonna lead us in communion. I'm gonna lead us in prayer. There is no better time or place or perfect opportunity to begin the new year than by taking communion as a family and leading ourselves into the new year. So let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you. Lord, I thank you for every person in this room this morning. I thank you for their willingness to be here, their commitment that they're gonna make to you in the new year. God, I pray that every one of us is changed from the inside out. That whether we've been committed to you for years or whether this is something new and we've had questions and we're ready to make that first step, God, that we commit to it, that we're excited about it, that we recommit ourselves. God, you are everything. You are overall. You're in charge of our finances, our jobs, our families. It is all about you. Lord, I, I praise you for what you're about to do in the life of this church and for those that come, Lord. You've got something awesome in store, and I'm just so glad to be a part of it. We love you. We thank you. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Becky, there we go, we're back. So, you saw me up here going maybe around behind pastor's back. That wasn't a bad way. That was a good way. Because sometimes God calls an audible. You know what audible is, football fans? Like, the, the play changes, the play is going to change. We're not going to do the song that we were going to do. We're going to sing Amazing Grace here in a minute. We're gonna try. We didn't rehearse this at all. Um, I know most of the words, but I know you all know some words, and I think we'll be fine but I want to say something about forgiveness because I know a lot about forgiveness because I've been forgiven much. Part of the story I didn't tell you about tithing starts in Luke chapter 7 with the lady when, when Jesus went to see Simon the uh, tax collector, or no, no, Pharisee, I'm sorry, um, that sat at his feet the entire time weeping and drying her, his feet with her hair or the tears and kissing his feet the entire time that was forgiven there is just a great picture of forgiveness and I read that this morning and I thought I need to be more like that and not so much like maybe what I am so um, but here's the other thing that God taught me about forgiveness a long time I struggled with it and maybe it'll help somebody here so I'm going to share it today um, I carried around a terrible burden about I just felt like I uh, really bad about myself and and things I had done and I just couldn't shake it and we had a revival I helped to organize it but nobody came <laughs> hardly to this revival and it was kind of boring to be honest with you but the last day he said he had this leaf in a case I can see it now tied with strings and he kept cutting pieces of the leaf off and it was a, he was talking about forgiveness and he got to the last day and he cut the last leaf and the leaf fell he said that one is you not forgiving yourself and you can't be free until you forgive yourself and he said if you don't forgive yourself you put yourself in a higher place than God so we can't you know it's hard flesh wants to think nobody could ever forgive me but he does I can't explain it, but he does. Let's try. Let's let's sing "Amazing Grace." Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I was was lost, but
nothing more beautiful than no instruments in a church filled with voices amen <laughs> now first question i have before we go into this does everyone have the elements does everyone have communion elements okay so we need a couple up front here for the band does everybody in the congregation have one okay if you don't have one put your hand up i'm going to make sure we get those to you thank you ryan <clears throat> i got a couple here and a couple up here Like I said, everybody's going to have it, so. Robert, you got one? Okay, good, good, good. All right, friends. Well, I know I felt the power of the Holy Spirit this service. I know, see, sometimes you can sit down. You can be seated. I don't want you to have to stand. Um, but I know, just like Ed and the band, sometimes you have to shift gears. Sometimes you have to let the Spirit move. And to close out with such a beautiful song and a beautiful church with, with this beautiful congregation it's just, it's a way to kick off 2022. And now I want to shift to, the, to our eyes for the communion table. A time where every single one of us is now going to come together as one. The Lord's Supper, it's, it's a good time to stop and recall the things that Jesus has given us over the last year. It's a good time to reflect on what Jesus did some 2,000 years ago. So today as we think about the birth of our Lord, let's pause and give thanks for what his mission truly was and the fact that we can start fresh in the new year. The fact that we can give it all to Jesus Christ and begin anew. And that was give, you know, Jesus giving his life for every one of us in the room today. It's something that we should never take for granted. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 and 24, it says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took the bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. My friends, his body was broken on your behalf. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 25 and 26, it says this. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this is the cup. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. My friends, this blood is poured out for us all. Brothers and sisters, as you leave this morning, understand what we have just done. We have done as a church family. We are, in fact, united by the blood of Christ. Understand the importance of it. Let it resonate with you this week and celebrate that time. Celebrate that new year and the fact that we've all been given life anew, a shining light for all to see. Amen? Amen. 
Dear Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for every person in this church today, God. And I pray as we begin this new year, 2022, God, that you shine your light on us. That that beacon of light that we have because of you, Lord, we can pour out to others. Lord, what you've done in the lives of so many in this church, it's beautiful, God. But I know you're not done. I know in this city, in Winter Haven, Florida, you have big plans. Big plans to impact this community, God. This world desperately needs you. And Lord, I pray that we as this church here at Spirit Lake, that you give each and every one of us that fire to go out and make disciples, Lord. We love you. We thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll give you a little walking out music. How about that? There's a call comes ring for the restless way.